Hi everyone and welcome to another review from Class 47 Peter and today's review is going to be something a little bit different because today we're looking at a model made by a manufacturer that I don't very often buy from. This is a Kerno Model Rail Centre exclusive and it's made by DJ Models and there's no prices for guessing what this model is because the title gives it away and you can see what it is written on the box just down here it's the BT well tank. Now this model has been out for a while. It was first released during 2011. In fact, it was given the Model of the Year award in 2011, around the time it came out. Now I didn't originally plan to get a BT well tank when they first came out, but they have actually since brought some more back out. And when I went to Worley, when I bought the model of 47829 in police livery, I also bought a BT well tank from the Kerno model centre stand. Originally, I was supposed to have gone for a GWR streamlined rail car by Dapple. I'm still going to get one of those, but when I saw this, I changed my mind and I just had to get one of these because when I saw one, I was just tempted. And it's a southern locomotive as well because I'm quite a fan of the southern region locomotives. And this is a very nice locomotive as well, the Beauty World Tank. It's quite an interesting loco, so I had to get one, I figured, for my collection. And what makes this one a bit special is it's in the BR Black with the early emblem. Because of all the Southern Region locos I have, I haven't got one that's in BR Black. So that's quite nice. It's nice to get a BR Black livery Southern loco. Okay, well enough of the chat. Let's get this model open and see what it's like. So first of all, it's a very nice design of box. I really do like this box. It's very nice. I do like the design of this on the front. There's the back of the box. So we'll get this model open. So it's packaging that's very similar to what DJ models have used for their Hatton's exclusive 1400, 5800 and 4800 models. In fact I still need to get the 1400, which I will do quite soon. That's on the cards. I do have the 5800 as you all know and it's a you know, very similar design of box. In fact Helgen used a similar style of packaging to this as well. Very nice firm box that. And because it's a small box I can just put it down here as well actually. And then we have the foam packaging with this ribbon around it so you can just simply lift out the packaging like so, like this. And then put that down to one side. Then how comes the paperwork. So first of all we have the instructions for the BT well tank. So here we have the diagram with all the parts for the model. So you can use this as a reference. So basically if you lose a part or part gets damaged then you can actually send away for one. All the parts are numbered, and you've got all the numbered parts here, all listed as well. It also gives you some brief history of the BT Well Tank. You can pause and read that if you want to, I'm not going to stop you. Then it tells you about the model itself. It talks to you about running in, removing the body. The accessory bag it tells you it's DCC ready. And tells you how to simply fit it with a DCC decoder. And then there's the warranty as well. It doesn't mention that this model is made by DJ Models. Well, it does actually at the top there. In association with DJ Models. 
which this model is produced by DJ Models, as I said earlier. So I put that to one side into my folder of instructions later on, and then we have the detail pack. Well, this is not the actual detail pack, this is the little pack that you get inside the box. The detail pack in question is inside the phone packaging with the locomotive, so we'll get to that in a minute. But in this little accessory bag, we have some locomotive fire irons on a sprue, which is what this is called. It's made of metal as well. And I shall be adding some of these fire irons to the BT well tank. I'll get them painted up and I'll simply add them on the model. So it's a very nice little feature that. Right, with the accessory bag now covered with the locomotive fire irons, we are now going to open up this package. And to do that, we've got to remove the ribbon. Which, this is a little bit awkward, and to be honest, I don't really like the ribbon ring wrapped around this fan packaging all that much. It is nice to see the had a ribbon put on it, but you have to take it off in order to get the foam cover off and to get the model at the packaging and it can be slightly awkward to get it off but you know it's not a big problem regardless so I put the ribbon to one side so with the ribbon removed we can now remove the foam cover and there we have the model, I mean just look at that that just looks stunning now here's the accessory bag in question with all the details to fit to the model. So we'll now have a look at these. And in this accessory bag we get two slim tension lock couplings, two brake pipes, and a couple of Southern Region Headco discs, which are fitted onto this plastic sprue. Now if we turn it onto the back you can see these slots. So these are designed to simply just slot onto the lamp irons. Very clever idea that, I've seen Batman do that as well with their Southern Region head code discs. So that's a nice little feature that. So n now all that's left to do with the unboxing is to simply get the model out of the packaging. Gently lifting it out of course without damaging any of the detail. Take away that plastic stand. Very nice phone package in this. Keep the models nice and snug in it. I don't know how ideal this packaging really is to be honest. But it's okay, it's quite nice. And because of the size it means I can just simply just stack the packaging up on here. Because usually with the bigger boxes I can't put them on here so they go down on the floor but because it's a small box it means I can put it up on here but anyway enough of that let's look at the model in detail first of all as ever I'm going to be talking about the weight now this is not the most heaviest model I've held it has to be said however there is some weight in this model albeit only a little bit of weight but it's enough to be able to pull a train regardless but what we have to consider is the size of the BTL tank it's only a small loco and this locomotive wasn't all that powerful in real life so it's not going to be all that powerful in model form because this model was nowhere near as powerful as a dub d a 9f or even a g2a these models wouldn't have hauled massively long trains they would have only have hauled short goods trains and small branch line passenger trains but there's enough weight in this model, at least, for this model to be able to do that. So that's what matters. Moving on to the detail now, which we have buffers that are not sprung. But I don't really have much care for that, because I don't really have much care for sprung buffers, to be honest with you. They are made of plastic, and it would have been nice if they'd been made of metal, but regardless, there's buffers on the model, so it doesn't really matter too much. One thing I might do though, is actually paint these little bits here. 
these bits here just in the middle of the buffers I might actually paint those silver I have done that before I did that with my Sentinel 4 WDM and I'm thinking about doing it with this model because it would be nice to do that For the buffer beam detail, there's loads of rivets on the buffer beam, and there you've got the little hole just in the top there for the brake pipe to go into, as well as a coupling hook. And also, you have just down here a coupling storage hook. So, if you have a chain link coupling or screw link coupling, you can simply rest the coupling on that. So, it's a very nice little bit of detail to have that. We also have some guard irons just at the front of the loco there under the buffer beam as well as a NEM socket to fit the coupling into. We've also got some separately fitted lamp irons on the model as well. On the front of the smart box door there and on the front of the sandboxes we have got quite a lot of rivet detail which not only adds to the detail of the model but adds all the more realism to it as well. We have some very nice detail on the smart box door as well, which includes a separately fitted lamp iron on top. The locomotive's running number, 30585, crisply printed on the locomotive's running number plate there. We have a couple of separately fitted lamp irons either side of the smart box, as well as some rivet detail on the smart box door itself. Separately fitted smart box door darts. And we've also got a crisply printed BR shed code there which the shed code for this model is 72F which in reality was the shed code for Wadebridge which is a town in Cornwall and I have been to Wadebridge and it's a very nice town I'd recommend you go there if you're in Cornwall and there's a really cool feature with this model as well which involves the smart box door as I'll demonstrate to you now excuse the giant fingers The smart box door actually comes off and that's basically to fit a DCC decoder. So you just basically pull the socket out, remove the blanking plug and then just simply fit the decoder in. And then put the smart box door back on which is held in place with magnets. As you can clearly see here. And if you just turn the smart box door round, you can see the magnets just there. Again, excuse my joint fingers. But that's a really cool design feature, that. Not something you see with other manufacturers' models, so... That's a plus, that is. We've got a very nice chimney, which can fit a smoke generator unit in there if you want to. We've got some rivet detail on the bottom of the chimney, and just look at the detail on top of the cap of the chimney. That is really nice. We've also got that little bit of detail behind the chimney. Not sure what that is and what it's for, but it's there. So it looks nice. And there's loads of rivets as well on the smoke box there. Again, rivets on the sand boxes. We've got some lovely painted pipe work there on the model. Just look at that. That really is quite nice to see. We've got some nice rivet detail on the cylinders there, as well as some drain cocks fitted. And just on the Frame to the chassis there, we've got some rivet detail there as well. We've also got some separately fitted brake rods as well. We've got a spring and an axle box on the front leading wheel there. I suppose you could call that a pony truck of some sort. And that looks very nice and I like that the axle box is painted. And just look at the side rods and the link motion and the valve gear. I just can't wait to see all that moving on the model, just like as you do on the real thing. We've also got some footsteps for the cab with rivet detail on them, and that looks nice. Rivet detail on the running board and the running place. There isn't any visible daylight under the boiler, but what we do have is a separately fitted spring there. Just under the boiler, and that does look quite nice. There's also some painted pie work there on the running board and just at the back of the sandbox there. Rivet detail on the wheel splashes, as well as some more gold pipe work running all up to the top of the boiler. Separately fitted metal handrail running all the way along the boiler, 
and up and above the smoke box door there. You've got a very nice dome with the safety valves in the top, which looks very nice. And of course we've got a separately fitted whistle. Not a brass one, it's a plastic one painted, but it still looks nice. We've got some nice detail on the front of the cab there. As well as the window rims painted gold and there's glazing in the cab windows as well, like we'd expect. We also have what looks like a blemish mark just on the front of the cab there, but that's not really a biggie. I mean, it's not going to really be all that noticeable when you're running the model. Especially in my videos, it won't be that much noticeable. But I actually do kind of like that in one way, because it kind of looks like that's come off the whistle. In a way, like, some steam's been emitted off the whistle and it's gone onto the front of the cab there. And it kind of looks like it's off the whistle. <laughs> if you get what I mean, so that's actually kind of cool. Obviously, it's not intentional by the model, obviously, it just happens to be there, but... You know, that's one way of looking at it. We've got some very nice boiler bands on the boiler. And also, on top of the boiler, there's a, a very, very fine mould line. That's not really much of a problem, though, because it's not really that noticeable. Only when you get right up close to it. You're never going to really notice it half the time. And you're never going to notice it at all anyway in my videos, when the model's running around the layout. Moving on to the cab roof, there's no detail on it at all, no rivets or anything like that, but it's just like how it is on the real loco. We've also got some handrails there on the sides of the cab. And there's a couple of rivet details on the sides of the cab there, and on the bunker, with the locomotive's room number 30585 crisply printed on the sides there. And of course the powerful classification for the loco, 0P. Which isn't a very powerful classification at all, so these locos weren't very powerful in real life. As like I said earlier, they were only really designed for hauling small goods trains, shunting, and they even operate on the occasional branch line local train as well. We've also got some cab interior detail. Just look at that. The dials, the gauges, the lever, the regulator. It's all painted and it looks very nice. Moving on to the livery application, which is spot on, the correct shade of black, and a very nice even coat of paint as well. And you've got the crisply printed BR Early emblem there, on the sides of the cab, and that just looks superb. Moving on to the back of the cab, you've got, again, painted window trims and glazing in the cab windows, and some very nice detail on top of the cab there, just above the windows. Loads of rivets on the bunker, and separately fitted lamp irons. We've also got these little hooks on top of the bunker to store the fire irons on. That's something I shall be doing. I shall be putting them on there. There's also coal in the bunker as well. Don't think it's removable but you could just be able to scatter some very fine coal on top of there. Again we have plastic buffers that aren't sprung. A coupling hook there on the buffer beam and some guard irons as well. And moving to the other side of the model, the detail is pretty much the same, with the exception of pipework running on top of the handrail there, on this side, which I don't get on the other side, but apart from that, the rest of the detail is exactly the same. Okay, it's running performance time. And as you can see, straight out of the box, the BT Well Tank is a smooth runner. There isn't any grinding noises, or motors burning out, or stuttering movement of the models, it's running as it should do, straight out of the box, smooth. I've also added the brake pipes and the Southern Region head code discs. Not sure if I'm going to keep the Southern head code discs on, I might take them off at some point, but I don't know. But I do quite like it with them on.
Now we come on to the loaded test run. And for this review I'm going to actually put the BTL tank on two trains. The first train, as you can see here, here, so from a stutter in there, has the BT World tank pulling five wagons. Which is a typical short goods train you'd see on the branch line. You'll also notice that I have actually started putting wagon loads in my wagons as well now. And even though there's only five wagons, it still shows why the weight is important. Even if it's just that little bit of weight. Now I've got the BT pulling the second train I've got for her, which is the rake of suburban coaches, which is about the right length train that looks like I would have bought on a branch line. That just looks fantastic. So overall then, the BT well tank is a stunning model. I highly recommend you get one of these models because they are just fantastic.
there's nothing else to say about this model really. I think this review speaks volumes. So on that basis then, I'm going to rate the superb Kerno BTL tank made by DJ Models a 10 out of 10. Why not? Because considering it's a small Oco, it really is stunning. This has been Class 47 Peter reviewing Kerno's BTL tank and I'll see you again soon for the next review where I'll be actually be reviewing a form of rolling stock which will be quite interesting but until then this has been Class 47 Peter reviewing the BT Well Tank please subscribe if you haven't already check out my other videos and I'll see you again soon but until then take care